Joshua said, everywhere my feet treads. See, I want you to understand, the moment you put a foot somewhere, the kingdom of God has showed up. If you believe, not only believe, but have submitted your life unto Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. But we always got to have a mind to work. I'm not talking about working your way to heaven. Look, when you're a part of the kingdom, you don't have to. Look, you're welcome in. You're a part of it. There's nothing about Jesus Christ that I ever seen that didn't have work in it. In other words, it wasn't labor in it. So in other words, now that I've received something, I can release something. I can know everything in the world. I can teach you an awesome 12 point this or that. I didn't come in a good word this morning. I didn't come in a good word. I've come to take it and not something in you. That you would stand up in this hour and you would continue to stand and do all you know to do and just stand and watch God move through everything that He's preordained. He's already pre written. Uh, and it is an extra time. And if you don't get yourself in position, He will rise somebody else up because it is going forth in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. A mind of works. So we're going to be in Nehemiah, virtually in chapter 4. Amen. We know that Nehemiah virtually uh, I had a burden. Amen. I believe there's some in the room that's had a burden for this region, either for a long time or has got it in the last 10 years, okay? Some of these 25 years. See, Nehemiah had got this burden from the Lord and that the, uh, there was virtually exposure to his brethren. To his holy family. To the one. So here he leaves this mansion. Amen. We know this story. He leaves this mansion to go to work. Amen. He, but he didn't, God didn't send him without everything he needed. In all three rings. Does that make sense this morning? He gave him everything from the wood to build it. He gave him the mortar. He gave him the hay, the scaffolds as we talk about in this Everything they needed in all three realms. He also given the emotional stability all right, to be able to handle, to be able to combat. Anytime you go to do something new and it truly has all to see of heaven, you will have a combatant. You will have something exposed. I'm talking about even the one that you might think is your holy family. The one that you might think is your brethren. Huh? Judas was in that trail. Huh? But at the same time, he was what revealed. Huh? Right? Peter was in that. There was a process of intimacy that come through denying him. It's okay if you deny him. Huh? Today you just got to stand. Repent for your sins and rise and say, huh? this is more than about me. This is about King Jesus and a body that is his body. Help me, Lord Jesus. It's going to be a treat. Nehemiah 4 and 1. So they already started, right? They're building this thing. Hey Amen. They're part of the mandate. And I believe. I mean, they realize they are part of the mandate. And I believe there's ones in the room that have recognized and says, Hey, I have a mandate. And it's much more than what I can even comprehend. Amen. We used to think the successful church was having multiple wild seats filled with people. All I care about is something to touch and agree and leave it, believe in the fullness that we are sons and daughters of the Most High. We're seated in Him right now and we have a mandate to come and pull people out of hell. I want to see people filled not with the Holy Ghost. I want to see people filled with love. I want to see people that are pursuing love and desire spiritual gifts, not vice versa. See, that's the move we got going right now. We have people that are pursuing gifts huh? and they desire in love. See, that's a back way. That's the way of the world. That's the way of the demonic. Huh? But the way of heaven is first you got to receive love. Walk in love. And then all of a sudden, he'll give you a word of knowledge. Which will open up the door where they can walk into love. They move you out of the side then. Because now they, they have the wholeness comes on them. The wholeness. Does that make sense this morning? Nehemiah 4 and 1. Now you understand why you've had so much spiritual battle. Even if you get here this morning. Believe it, it ain't just you. Amen. Now it came about when Sambalat heard that we were building the wall. He become, um, became furious and very angry and mocked the Jews. You have been mocked before. Amen. In other words, what, the work is being ridiculed. Amen. They're a little different over there. That little crazy. Can y'all believe that they got somebody over there in shorts and a t-shirt preaching? Can you believe that her hair wasn't put up in a bun and covered her head? Can you believe that female 
female preachers preaching. Can you believe she's leading that ministry? I'm here to tell you ha, the fullness of God, ha, the restoration of God is upon His bride, ha, and we are plowing through that which God, that demonic structure and the religious structure has built in this region. See, it always starts with one, though. There is always one that attacks are started with. This is the start of the attack. Amen. Let's see the start of the attack. He spoke in the presence of his brothers and the wealthy man of Samaria and said, What are these feeble Jew Jews doing? Are they going to restore it for themselves? Question mark. Can they offer sacrifice? Question mark. I've seen some true authentic sacrifice this morning. Amen. Upon his altar. I'm talking about that's your worship. Amen. You come in and you said, you know what? I'm going to put my theology aside. I'm going to put the way I thought it was supposed to work. I'm going to put all this aside. And I just want to bow at your feet, Jesus. I just want to take and set in your presence. I want to build a throne room this morning. Ha, ha, that will take and always be a throne room from this day forward. That truly, no matter what I'm facing, in my misdirection, in my confusion, in my wanting to give up, ha, that you are there upon my heart. And you always are offering breakthrough. No matter what I'm facing. Yeah. Amen? Yes, Lord. Amen? Nehemiah 4, 2 and 3 says this. He spoke in the presence of his brothers and the wealthy men of Samaria and says, We know it started in the demonic realm, right? But now he's already pulled in the natural realm, right? They probably had some devils too. But look at this right here. We're not glorifying devils. We're exposing them, okay? What are the feeble Jews doing? Are they going to restore it for themselves? Can they offer sacrifice? Can they finish it in a day? See, they're locking them. Can they revive the stones from the dusty rubble, even the burned ones? Yes. A third of the wall was built, rebuilt. And guess what? There was two thirds of it built new. But they're mocking him because there's a mandate. And from now Tobiah, the Ammonite was near him and said, Even what they are building, if the fox should jump on it, he would break their stone wall down. In other words, when you continue to build and allow um, yourselves to be, um, uh, not allow yourselves to be distracted, then the enemy begins to gather people of influence and power, not only in the demonic realm, but in the natural realm. Now you have an attack of the mind coming from multiple directions. Not only you got people, you got your family saying this, they reminded you of your past. You know good and well there's a new man on the scene because Jesus himself has spoke to you and all of a sudden the, the people that even minister to you because God's doing something new, they're like, you're a little too radical. I don't understand that. They'll take one scripture and twist it seven different ways uh, because of their theology. I'm here to tell you everything when you have a mandate from heaven. Ask Jeremiah when you have a mandate from heaven. I'm here to tell you they will try to get you to compromise they want to have it their way see it says we see it parts let's see if I can see in my part and I'm receptive to prophet Lori's part or our, 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 our sister Sandra's part see I'm not saying I'm compromising what I'm saying is I see the value in what they carry because they are carrying the same thing I carry but you're going to be ridiculed See, this ain't a fluffy message. I want to be real with you this morning, but I also want you to know you got the power that raised Jesus from the cross. And if you got the power that raised Jesus, in other words, all this insufficiency was cured, and now He wants to demonstrate it through your life, through your open wounds. Ha! You know why they doubt? Because we're not mature enough. Come on, Holy Ghost. We're not mature enough as a bride or whatever to allow them to stick their hands in the wounds that you carry. See, that broke the doubt off of Thomas. The perplexedness off his mind. In other words, our transparency. Quit running from your past and say, hey, I haven't quit a thing, but I began something new. That was the old man, and that was from where I was in a natural realm and going to hell, but now I live in heaven and my eternity is with him. That's evidence that the new has come because that which was broken down, which is rubbish, that's what they're talking about. That which is rubbish, he's going to be rebuilt today. I'm here to tell you, King Jesus I can touch your life in one second and shift everything. 
but will you receive that one word? Amen. We hear that prophesy. One word, it'll shift everything. But you got to receive. That's what shifts it, right? Amen. Then you got to seek it out. Who? Seek out his face. Amen. All right, I'm trying to teach. Help me, Holy Ghost. Now you have the attacks of the mind coming from multiple directions. The only power it has is the attention you pay it. Your family starts acting up. You've been praying for me, gets worse. Keep praying. Keep praying. You can do more from that prayer closet than you can physically any day. Amen. But, but you just don't understand. I'm here to tell you, I don't need you to understand me. I need you to get your word. I need you to spend time in the presence of God. You'll have familiar spirits that come and they start. And they'll even send one of their little foot soldiers in, in the middle of the night. Or whatever. It's like, you need to do this. You need to do this. You need to do this. I know we don't want to hear it, but the thing is, are you relying on the power of you, or are you relying on the power of the Holy Ghost? I'm talking about the one that gave, gave, gave you access to all wisdom. Amen? Amen. All right, I'm going to teach you a little bit more. So the only power it has is the attention you pay. So what you need to do is get up in the morning, you got some bearing up, and I'm object to and you just say, you know what, I get power to none of this. I decree and declare that I'm a son of a God, and I have access and a perspective from heaven and everything. I, look, if I stay down here, it looks rough, and it looks like I can fix it. When I come up here, I see he's already fixed it. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 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 Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. How do you not get distracted? Amen. How do I not get distracted? Anybody ever asked that question? Amen? It says, Nehemiah 4 and 4, Hear, O oh God. Hear, O oh God, for we are despised. Turn back their taunt on their own heads and get them up to be plundered in the land where they are captives. First thing we got to remember to break down prayer because we got this little loosey-goosey uh, praying goes on. Uh, God's trying to give you access to the refrigerator. Go get the milk. I mean, you honor him in that. What is that? Get in your word. Get the nutrients in you. And as you spend time with the word, I'm hearing the word becomes you. And you understand there's certain things that you're not doing dishonorly. But you already know he's given it to you. Uh, you already asked him for it. He's already laid it in your hands. He's already given you that man. What you got to do is rise up and say, Lord Jesus, I decree this thing that's already established. I, you sent me with what? Uh, uh, my what is your what is your dominion in? That's my word, everybody. My word, my voice. Our voice, amen. How many believes that? Amen. That's what it says again. If you look back at how God made the world or spoke it into existence, it said He He there's dominion in His voice. Go back to Genesis. But then He made us with His hands. Amen. That's the difference of us and everything. So you got to speak of that. reason Job says when you, de when you decree a thing, it's established. You have access to the throne room now, and you can approach it boldly. And now that you release it, right, you're in, you're passing through, but you're releasing it's established. Heaven starts moving, angelic start getting on the scene. I'm talking about heaven moves. That's the reason Jesus had to come in a form of a man. Yes. Makes sense. And when he spoke, heaven moved. When he went into the hills to pray, heaven moved. Don't tell me you're too busy, you can't study your Bible, or you can't pray. It might not look the way I do it, but you commune with the King. Amen? Amen. But, by prayer, we first must remember the Lord fights for us. 2 Chronicles 20 and 15 says, And he said, Listen, all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord, Do not fear or be dismayed, because the great multitude for the battle is not yours, but God's. I'm here to tell you there's a religious struggle, I mean structure, and there's a, a bunch of devils that's in this region, but the Lord says don't fear. You know what paralyzes your faith? Fear. Amen? Mm -hmm. yes. Amen? What did Moses say? Lord, I can't speak. I have a problem speaking, right? Look, just speak. No matter what it sounds like. No matter what your song sounds like. I ain't saying you're going to leave worship uh, on from stage. But I'm here to tell you, you might be the very one that that living water starts to flow out of you because you're releasing the sound of heaven in that atmosphere at that moment. Amen? Yes. Say, Lord, give me, or help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Open my mouth. 
With the wisdom. With the wisdom. That you fight my battles. That you fight my battles. What did he say in Exodus 14 and 14? The Lord will fight for you. And you have only to be silent. Well, that doesn't make sense. You just told me I need to open my mouth. In other words, you need to quit fighting flesh and blood. Does that make sense? You need to quit going and come back with them and you need to go to the throne room. Now, there is time for open confrontation. That's part of open rebukes better than his love. That's part of love. But there's also a time that we will suffer in private, but King Jesus will pull us up out of that mess. That word spoken, whatever it is, the key comes to this. The moment you retaliate and take it in your own hands, now you come in agreement with what they say. Hi, Tata Tonda. Our most important thing, even in the midst of persecution, even in the midst where we would look at it and see where the victim is not to make agreement with what it is because it'll draw, it'll, it'll, it'll rise a uh, uh, fence up in your heart. You'll start to put this, uh, uh, this thing around your heart called a jail cell. Make sense? And then bitterness starts to grow as you sit soak in what you've made agreement with. So I'm going to keep you healthy. I'm going to keep you out of your emotion. I want you to, I'll keep you where you're seated in Christ Jesus right now that you can war because it's much bigger than you. You are the vessel as an example. Paul said, do as I do. As I have left you, I've been an example unto you. Amen? He didn't say I was getting it all perfect. He said, I pursue the heart of the Father. Amen? And I listen to his voice. And I quit trying to fight with the physical and the natural realm. So it says this in Ephesians 6 and 12. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness. And that means there's some darkness in this world. Amen. They, this is the demonic structure if we look at this. Uh, guess what? I'm here to tell you that Lucifer had a facet of wisdom. Does that make sense? Lucifer, amen, the deceiver, amen, had a facet of wisdom. He was made by whom? Okay, so at one time before his choice that he wanted to be higher than God, that means he was made perfect in a, uh, that was a, uh, uh, an example of, or uh, that was a part of God that he spoke into him. So in other words, he had access. Amen. He didn't forget all that when he felt uh, earth and just sloppy. Amen. See, some of that that will bring exposure to some things you're looking at. Uh, I'm not breaking all that down as far as the structure. I just want you to know there's a structure, okay, of the demonic realm. And, and the key comes down, that's reading you're silent. You don't go, you don't go, you don't go, look, you don't walk in and start to say, I'm buying up every devil and I do this. Look, don't be the church police. You'll take on some warfare that you weren't designed to take on for. What I mean is there's a mandate. And there is a spirit. That's what God's called you to. You've got to have wisdom. I've seen people um, that go into different cities and regions. I've got this upon my life. But yet God might not have mandated you. He mandated this uh, arm over here to go into that region. Does that make sense? That's the reason a lot of churches just went out and just planted. And, and there's no counsel with them. There's no uh, connection to the body that wisdom is speaking in to different places. That's the reason they get demolished or they come in our Ichabod church. Why? Because they're not connected to the one body, to the one head. We all have access, right? Look, I'm doing much more in the room. Some of this is giving you wisdom of things and I hope it's confirming things. A lot of this is to this region, okay? Because we're breaking down much more. Amen? We're breaking much more than what's in this room. Amen. We are gathered together to take over this region. That's what we're doing. So with that, worship is our warfare. Right? I mean, it's agreement with that. Worship is our warfare. Amen. Be my fourth, um, four through five. Hear, O God, how we are despised. Return. Remember, I read this. Return the reproach on their heads and give them for the plunder in the land of the captivity. And this is the, the verse I didn't read. Do not, verse five, do not forgive their iniquity. And let not their sin be blotted out before you, for they have um, demoralized the builders. Matthew 11 and 12 says this, From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. 
and the violent men take it by force. See, this patty cake column, we think we're in this little patty cake. I'm here to tell you, yes, how we act is not like the world. We don't act like the devils. Huh? We act like King Jesus. Huh? When he seen a problem and he walked up in the temple, he turned over some tables. Amen. When he, when he raised the religious people, I say he had fire in his eyes. Amen. When he, it, see, days of his parts, you got to see. We got to get rid of the blue-eyed, white uh, 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 Jesus. I'm here to tell you that ain't what Jesus looked like. I, I'm here to tell you his false gospel. They made it an image. They made it a, 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 a statue. It's a little G. I'm not tearing. I'm not tearing down King Jesus. What I'm doing is is those imaginations and that false uh, idol worship that, just, that the, this region has upon their heart. Okay, we're getting somewhere today. We get somewhere today. The enemy, the enemy plots in private and doesn't care if they get to you the first time or the thousandth time. They just want to get you distracted and wear you down. See, that's what happens when you have a, uh, a, a, false, uh, a, a false understanding of who you are and who Christ Jesus is. That makes sense. Uh, when everything's just patty cake and you live how you want to do. Uh, now, say, uh, grace covers everything. Uh, I'm here to tell you. I'm not saying that the mercy ain't new every day. But I'm here to tell you, if you don't repent, you may end up being that which was once uh, you tasted the goodness of God. There's different parts that says this in the Bible. Because people want to overlook this. Their faith was shipwrecked. Their faith was shipwrecked. I know that's a little uncomfortable. Other one says, talks about they return back to their vomit as a dog. Amen? Other ones say, other parts say it would have been better off for them never to know. Make sense? So what I'm saying is, now that you have access, put your focus on Him. And your worship is your warfare. That distraction might come. That family member might come. Whoever it might be might come. And they might be the one carrying that devil to get you distracted. I'm here to tell you, faith will break the yoke. Amen? Because the anointing of, I mean, anointing, anointing of Christ breaks the yoke. But by faith. So we have to plow through these things and quit playing patty cake. Say, no. Look, this is the sin. This is this is the problem. I want to tell you the one that fulfilled it, took place of, which is Christ Jesus. Now you got to do is walk in relationship, second by second. I'm not being religious by saying sin. The Bible says sin. Jesus pointed out sin, right? In other words, he come, if he wanted to point it out sin, how did he die for it? He come to show the opposite of it. Does that make sense? <laughs> All right. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So I want to get you distracted and wire you down. Say, Lord, move the distractions. Move the distractions. By the attention I pay them. By the attention I pay them. Thank you, Jesus. Nehemiah 4, 7 through 8. Now when Sambalat, Tobiah, and the Arabs, and Amorites, and the Asadites heard that they repaired the, uh, of the walls of Jerusalem went on, and that their breaches began to be closed, they were very angry. And man, you know what? I'm here to tell you when with their plots and their schisms and their discouragement, they're trying to blame their, their, their ridicule they come against you. Don't look, it makes them angry. They get upset and like, what's going on? Does that make sense? They, they like, this did work, but uh, down the road, but something's going on. So listen to this. It says, all of them conspired together to come and fight against Jerusalem and to cause a disturbance in it. So in other words, they're, uh, they're all coming together. It's the NSAB, if you uh, wonder what translation I'm reading. They all start to come together. They start to plot. They, now, it ain't just an attack in the middle of the night. We got people showing up from all sides. It ain't just the army that had power. Now it's the king over here. Now, in other words, uh, let's put it in modern day terms. It's the mayor over here. It's the, it might be the sheriff over here and then the governor over there. I ain't going against them. I'm here to tell you that the exposure is coming here to Georgia. The the exposure of the light to the darkness is coming to Georgia and a revival will come forth. There is a wall being built. It's a people that's not distracted by that which is placed and what this region has received. But we have come as a people to expose it by the authority of Jesus Christ, the delegation that he has put on our lives. 
That's how your family gets free. That's how this region gets free. Because we focus on the Mante and the King of Kings more than we focus on what was already here. So let's see this. It says in Nehemiah 4 and 10. In Judah it was said, the strength of the burden bears it is failing. Yet there is much rubbish. And we ourselves are unable to rebuild the wall. So what's happened here or whatever, uh, they, they go in prayer again, right? It's also about they go into prayer again. And here's Judah, right? Amen? Who's Judah? Who's Judah? He's praised, but the Lion of Judah. So now that we're seated in Christ Jesus because we've given our life over to Him, we've submitted, not just seen Him as a Savior, but now we see that He is Lord. In other words, He's not enslaving us, but He's freeing us because we've said Lord. If that wish did, did contaminate you, that drug, that sickness, that brokenness. I'm here to tell you, I've been called up by every devil. I've been, uh, 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 there's been many things that come upon me that I come in agreement with. But when the light hit my soul, when the light started tugging on my heart, and I said, Lord Jesus, I, he broke things off. I, he, I was no longer condemned. I was speaking with somebody the other day, and I said, man, I had to just, uh, this brings clarity because there were some things that had so much power, and I was in guilt and shame, and I, I thought about these, and all of a sudden I had no emotion about them. And he said, look, that's redemption. No longer is it there anymore. Does that make sense? There's many times, see what happens when the true king walks into your life. He'll erase your past. But he don't just say, hey, I, I'm saying it's paid for. I'm going to erase it. No, Lord, the power you did have agreement with. You come in agreement with me. And it has no power on you no more. So I want to talk about corporate prayer versus clarity, unity, and strategy. Clarity, unity, and strategy. But in the midst of prayer, you'll have three realms of opposition. I preached this before, but I've never seen it the way I see it today. So Nehemiah 4 and 10 through 12 says this. Uh, this in Judah, it was said. The strength of the burden bearers is failing, yet there is much rubbish. And we ourselves are unable to rebuild the wall. See, they've already come in agreement with the attack. Remember from the first or whatever, when they was attacked, it was like if a box went up on it, it would fall to the ground. Make sense? Uh, see, in their mind now, they're what? They're coming in agreement. They just built half of this thing. It hasn't got the gates, but it's half of this thing is built. And all of a sudden, they come in agreement with what the enemy is coming against them. I believe there's some of you that's been weighed down, and I'm here to bring clarity to you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. That's why I came here all morning. I'm here to bring clarity to you that you don't make agreement with what the enemy said, what your family has said, what's come from this world. You come in agreement with what the Word of God is mandated over your life. And He spoke of who you are in Him and where you are seated in Him right now to continue to go forth. And we ourselves are unable to build a wall. Our enemy said, they will not know or see until we come against them kill them and put a stop to the works. They're trying to bring fear. When the Jews who lived near them came out told us ten times, they will come up against us from every place where you may turn. So I'm going to show you the three realms of, um, uh, of opposition you're going to face when you go into a region. I'm talking about truly as an apostolic. We're, all, not, we're not all apostles, but we're all apostolic. Apostolic means sin. So you will sit on your job site, that promotion, or wherever you might be, want to bring the kingdom of God, not to just draw a paycheck. When we quit looking at our work, it's just a paycheck and a place where this, uh, we got to do this and we'll get back to church on Sunday. I'm here to tell you, you're being equipped right now for the battlefield that God's entrusted to you there. They might be somebody broken that'll never walk in this church, that'll never come close to a revival again, that'll never come to a place of worship, a place of equipping, but you have brought the kingdom the moment you walk up on the side, on the scene. You ain't got to say, I quit doing this and quit doing that. You allow Holy Spirit, the living water, to pour out of your belly. When it does, it'll start to tug on people's heart. They'll start to see hope for the first time. And then when they say, what is this? What is different? King Jesus. What is different? King Jesus. What is different? King Jesus. Well, it don't make no sense. But something's tugging on me. Something's 
still on. I was so heavy. I, and this is what I had plans to do, but something shifted. It's that simple. I know you want some deep theological something that are down the road about two miles. They'll teach you whatever you want to uh, be taught. I'm here to tell you how to stand and bring the kingdom of God in all your feet. Tread. And that way we take over a region and not a building. Amen. So the negative problem pointer. The negative problem pointer. The problem pointer in your life are good at whining about what's wrong but offer nothing in the area of solving the problem. They lack faith and they lack the heart to build. They're, they lack vision. They're like the 10 of the 12 spies. But we can't. I'm tired. Look, I get tired too. I can remember when I, I caught the revelation that praise is there's a praying upon a garment of praise and like one of the biggest breakthroughs for me, what takes place is this, is also, I, I get a dance in my feet. I'm talking about you ain't got to be around, ain't nobody else around. I'm in my private time with the Lord and I begin to dance unto the Lord. I'm here to tell you the reason the club works down the road because there's an originality that the enemy has come in and made it a, 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 a false of you dance to the Lord. I, 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 I encourage you to close the door. Amen? And, I, and just welcome the Holy Spirit. And get a little... In your, I, that ain't the only praise, man. But I'm here to tell you there was a season of it that we went through of God was preparing and restoring that to this region. And there was always a dance. And I thought, Lord Jesus, I'm wore out. I don't feel like dancing. But he said, you're looking at it from the wrong perspective. You're looking at it from a natural realm. You don't realize what your praise that goes before the enemy and is taking over. You know, my worship is my warfare. In worship, there is praise. And it pushes back. It goes before. And it takes out the enemy before you even get there. Does that make sense? Well, that ain't how we did it down the road. I'm over. I ain't how grandmama did it either. Well, maybe you need to quit trying to be grandma. I, I hear people, I've got the, I, I'm like Elijah. No, I'm here to tell you like whoever God created you to be. That might run parallel in your life, but go on and take that. That's before you were saved. Right? That was point two. You are another seed. You are not Elijah. Or you are not a this. Or you are not a that. It may run parallel and the mandate on your life, but that's not who you are. God has made you originally. Amen. This is too hard. I'm overwhelmed. I need a break. The re this religion is too hard. Look, this ain't a religion. Remember, we take it by force. Now remember that? The, the scripture is here. We take it by force. In other words, man, how, how can we show up to all this other stuff, but we can never take and show up to truly just come and touch and agree and say, Lord, you're king. Our priorities is mixed up. How do we get on Facebook for an hour and say, now we don't have time to read our word? See, I'm plowing through some things. This is in the room. I got time to Google everything, but I don't want to learn how to uh, dig into the word and see what it was in Greek. Look, I ain't trying to make you a theologist. The mandate might not be a pulpit ministry, but I want you to be able to recognize when a false apostle, a false prophet, a false pastor, a false believer, a false intercessor. I'm talking about Bar Jesus walked up on the scene, but what did Paul do? Ha, he took it by force. Not that he put him in a headlock, not that he pulled out a knife, but God fought his battle and he shifted that region. Amen? So this is forward. Don't try to figure it all out. Just receive Holy Spirit. Amen? Receive what Holy Spirit is doing. So that's the first realm. So this is the this is why I want you. I want to give you some things to because it's one thing to point something out, right? Somebody told me I was dead. I was dead going to hell. Nobody told me to process a relationship. They just want to give me this religious structure. Sign this card and then everything's well. Bull hockey. Get rid of your cards. <laughs> Amen. I understand if you're getting your information or whatever else, but get rid of that. That's a false gospel. It's a continual relationship until he either brings you up or comes back. Sack it by sack. In other words, he broke opiates off of me in a jail cell. 
And it wasn't long after that, he started dealing with my pornography. He started dealing with my fornication. He read his pornography. Pornography is funny. He started dealing with my lying. He started dealing with my cheating. He started, I'm talking about cheating. Where I will use a rap Peter to pay Paul. He started dealing with all this stuff. But he never one time said I was worthless. He said the king of kings, the lamb that was slain before the foundations of the earth. Ha, he's already paid for it. When he went to the cross, it was done. And now he's ascended. And is he ascended because of the promise coming? You've ascended. So in other words, you have all access. In other words, if you got a physical problem of brokenness today, I'm here to tell you it was sufficient on the cross. But the Holy Ghost huh, may have 2019, September 2, 2, 22. It says, to, for that which was taken care of to be applied in this moment, this hour. Does that make sense? The promise, the Holy Ghost. And anything else you're struggling with, Remember, we're breaking an agreement of the lies and the brokenness and everything that Jesus died for. Amen? So, if you're always pointing out problems but lend no hand to solving them, solving the problem, then you become part of the problem. If you always look, you tell me or you can tell your mama, you can tell your daddy, you can tell Uncle Joe, you can tell whoever you want to talk about how to do it, but you ain't never you ain't never laboring with them, you ain't never doing nothing. You show up for your little hour and a half, two hours, but you don't come over and labor and nothing else. Ha, you can tell somebody that food ain't tastes no good, but you went in there or at least getting the kids off of them or this off of them to help them out. Does that make sense? Make it very practical in your household. Ha, we're there, what, to be in unity, to work together, to labor together. I'm here to tell you, and look, I, uh, I, there's a little conviction on this with me. I, remember, I, he's preaching to me and through me. Or I'm preaching to me and through me, but he's coming to me. Amen. You ain't just to make money, husband or wife, whatever rolls it through that or both. There's a clarity and a balance to the household. Amen. That'll break down some religious stru called structures right there. A wife has to do it all. Bull hockey. Bull hockey. I'm here to come. I'll break it off of you. Brothers. Bull hockey. Amen. And ladies, quit down. Speak life. Quit coming to agreement. What's got a hold of? Speak life over. Go in and love God enough to get in your prayer room to say, you know what? This is a lie from hell. This is what was going on. This is what's been taught. But I'm going to find the truth in the Word and I'm going to get in my prayer closet and I'm going to be relentless until I see their life shift. Does that make sense? That's the difference of the world and the demonic to the true sons that submitted to the Lord. When we think we got it figured out, and we think this, this, or this has got it, is what's in place, look, we've already missed it. We need to repent. Look, I'm here to tell you, I learned, I learned every day, I know nothing, more and more of nothing, but I know Him, which shows me and gives me access to everything. Make sense? All right. So the second realm of opposition is the enemy. Oh, I didn't give you all the objectives. The two things. I want to give you some of you are taking notes. They're always coming to you. The first one is, I feel they'll come to you. I, I feel there is a problem here. Identify the problem then. Look, I don't want to see your fruit. I want to see the fruit of what you're, you're seeing from a natural realm. I, how do we solve this? How do we get to the root? Amen? It's the same thing when it comes to a true gospel. Let's look at the fruit, and the fruit will take you to the root. That's what the Lord told me a long time ago. He says, when you can identify the fruit, in other words, the work, whatever it is coming out of it, you will be able to find the pathway back to the vine. Or you'll be able to find the pathway back to the demonic or the soulless realm. Does that make sense? So the fruit, we're going to use, whether it's good or bad, is a pathway to the root. Amen? So, if you go to your leaders, or you go to somebody, your mom and your daddy, your household, whatever, your job, amen? Because it says, actually, your example of submitting, even to the people that of society here that don't know Jesus, your example of submission will bring them over. We don't want to hear that, though. Go read First Peter chapter uh, 2 and 3. It'll show you. Okay. The next, but I thought about it, researched it, Googled it, and prayed about it, and I might have a couple ways to fix it. 
In other words, now you're presenting a solution. These people come, look, they get this atmosphere, the prophetic, they see who they are, they get zealous. But that, the zealous hasn't been turned into passion. See, passion will sustain a thing. Passion actually is restored of what's that was zealous. In other words, you come up out of your soulless realm and you counted the cost of what I might have to face because of this new thing that God's birthing or this solution, the mind of Christ, is to be applied to this thing. Write it out. Uh, put it out. What's the, what is it you've looked up? What have you looked at the demographics of what we're facing? All right. And when it comes to like prayer stuff or uh, like to your job, think about this. You're gifted. You know how to persuade yourself to climb up the ladder, right? I've seen this a lot. And all of a sudden, once they get up there, and they, I'm up here now. Now all of a sudden, somebody got promoted. Want to tell the one that's, that that truly is uh, set this stuff in place. So I'm just tell you to do your job now. So that's what we do to God sometimes. Uh, now after we get promotion or things start to happen, well, God, this is how it needs to happen. So that's what's happened. This reason, this reason is die uh, was dead and dry, but now the river of life, King Jesus Himself, is coming through His remnant to transform this thing. Not by might or power, but by His Spirit. Amen? Alright, the enemy, the second round. Nehemiah 4 and 11. Our enemies say that they will not work or see until we come among them, kill them, and put a stop to the work. Devils work in unison to stop the move of God in a region. They work in unison. The sad thing is there is often more unity in the demonic realm than in the church. That's why many can't get set free. That's why some struggle with growth and advancement. In other words, demons working, uh, I said this, other, demons work in secret to destroy you publicly. Demons will work in, uh, in, 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 I mean, demons will work in private to destroy you publicly. This is what I even feel in the room. Some of you have been plowing so long. Um, uh, I can remember when I first come into this region and I'd actually been sent out um, to, I uh, mean, actually been sent out to establish this uh, RI in the old building. And uh, with that, um, I would just share everything I had. Lord, Lord, tell me I just shared. I just shared everybody. I thought everybody was just in love with Jesus and wanted to see people get free. I did. I thought that. Mm -hmm. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, Son, don't share the contents of your heart. Share the fruit of your heart. Amen. See, there's a level of people that you can share the contents of your heart with. The rest, you got to just let them see the fruit of your heart. In other words, the example, even in the midst of... Because we know if, you, if you're ignorant and you throw a stone, like... Uh, Judah, he loves to throw rocks. He's getting at that age. And he's only 18 months. He loves to throw rocks. So he's ignorant. In other words, he don't know that if he throws that rock, he can hurt something. He can damage the paint on the car. He can hurt um, you know, one of his brothers, whatever else, right? So we have to have clarity and be mature enough to understand that there's going to be people that will walk in at those stones. But there's some people or whatever that's set up to take you out with some stone. There's a difference. We just can't come in agreement with either one of them. We don't pay that distraction of that stone. Say, hi, my, my Lord fights my battles. And I'm going to worship the king. And I'm going to continue working on the wall. And the other ones or whatever, you're starting to help them work on the wall. You're, you're starting to help them. Why? By your example, you've both been a maturity to be able to take a stone. Paul said, be gentle unto all men. In other words, be forbearing and be forgiveness. Our life forgiveness to come place. That's what gentleness is, forbearing. So in other words, if somebody co-cocks me with a rock or with a word, don't be offended, amen? They might be ignorant of what they're doing. That's where a lot of people's left churches. Look, I don't come here for you, I come here for Jesus. Amen? When I was submitted to a house, and I'm still submitted to a spiritual father of the faith, um, but when I was submitted to the house, guess what? I didn't go there for that uh, senior leader. I went there for Jesus because God sent there. I was laying on it. I'm talking about just got fresh out of jail and laying on my body. I didn't have nothing. I was laying on the couch and I hear the audible voice of God because I'm praying. Look, there's an importance that I need to be with family. See, I understood if I stayed with certain atmosphere what it created in my life. I'm not saying they made my choice, but it was the influence that I was in agreement with all the time. So I understood that when God spoke, I go out there to that little white church. I, I went there for Jesus. I went there to take and say, whatever it takes, Lord. 
Because honestly, at that time, I was just trying to figure out not just to survive. Because the word says I thrive. Does that make sense? I thrive. It might not be everything in the natural realm that I'm thriving in. But spiritually, I got peace. I got peace. And there's grace. There's an influence upon the cross. It's undeserved, but it's upon me. It's all that's feeling it. Peace, joy, goodness, love. All these things. Does that make sense? That's the utmost focus. Which comes from focusing on Jesus. Alright. So. Demons work in secret and secret to destroy you publicly. In combat sometimes. Now this right here is from my apostle. Um, my spiritual father in the faith. Um, he was in the service and he gives some really good um, uh, things to uh, bring clarity. In combat sometimes it's better to shoot the wound instead of of shoot to kill. So in other words, if uh, if one of my sisters or my brother are, are hurt, we look at this in the natural room, they've been wounded now, it takes two people to drag them out, right? So now not only is somebody wounded, that sniper they took and hit them in the leg instead of taking killing them can make a kill shot on three of us now if you're not careful. Does that make sense? I know this ain't deep theological, but I'm here to tell you, you've got to take and understand the real war you're in. Makes sense? If, if, if you understand you're in a war, then you know that, look, my worship is my warfare, and there's certain things that God, because He says, don't be ignorant of the devil's devices. In other words, God will give you wisdom and eyes of understanding to see this mess. Amen. Demonic ambushes are surprise attacks meant to cripple, kill, and destroy. Sounds like the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Oh, Amen? The same way you respond to a natural ambush is the same way you respond to a spiritual ambush. What? Fire back. See, so you're not saying, uh, uh, the thing comes in this, when you fire back, you come in agreement with who you are. In other words, you ain't got time to mess with you. Sam Bell, I ain't even paying you no attention. You have a right, so your arm ain't paying you no attention. Lord Jesus, I love you. Lord Jesus, this is the real very thing I'm walking through. I, I'm struggling. I just want to be straight up. I, I, I don't feel like going any further. But it says you fight my battles. Your word says that you laid out everything. It also says that you go before me. So right now, Father God, my response Responsibility is to worship you and say you are king and you got it all laid out. You didn't bring me this far ha, to stop. Now this is very real. This is my prayer. This is how I decree and declare. When I get there, I'm talking about last night. I, I said I am not quitting. Ha. Why? Because the authority of Jesus Christ ha, has been delegated in my life. Ha. The restoration of Genesis 1 and 27 is upon my life. And that which the blood has been applied to ha, gives me the what? The power to a I'm facing. But I just got to open my mouth and come in agreement with the truth instead of the lie. So fire back. Fire back. The enemy loves to expose vulnerability. In the natural, most combat operations occur in the night. The same is true in the spirit. So if he loves, like, I like to think about this vulnerability. And I know, um, now I wouldn't watch this movie to today, but I watched it pre-Jesus before I started a relationship with him. Because I'm big on whatever I put in is going to come out. But there was a facet. Now, some of y'all heard me say this before. There was, there was something I gained from a natural movie, a secular movie. Of, um, it was called Eight Mile by Eminem, right? You watch the storyline of this movie, Birch just says this. Every time he gets up to battle and rap against somebody else, remember he's going against somebody, get conquered every time. Why he pull up his past, he pull up everything that he missed it, how he was, the word said he was trailer park trash, and all this mess, right? Remember those words being spoken, so he's coming in agreement, he's tearing it down on stage, he has nothing to say back. Finally, what takes place is, I like to call this after Christ. This is my current. He puts out everything. This is who I was. This is uh, this. This I, I do live over here. I do do this. I was broken. I was an addict. I was this. I was that. But now, see, the enemy had nothing that they could combat him with. In other words, same thing with you. You might have a past. I'm here to tell you if you're breathing, you have a past. But I'm here to tell you, King Jesus' blood is sufficient. He, he covers all. He, he has the power to bring anything that you're facing right now. He sent him as a promise, as a promise into you. The thing is that 
But you have to remember that temptation ain't sin. That the action of that temptation is sin. But I got the power of the Holy Ghost. That's what I had to stand and do when the Lord was rewiring. I'm talking about the residue. I had a devil. I'm talking about a, uh, a, a devil of what you would call Jezebel. She finds me the hardest. But she knows who's in me. My point being like this. Used to she'd get me with her tricks and her schemes. But you know what I started to do? Declaring the word of me. I started declaring the word of me. That ain't who I am. Because see, I got delivered to Jezebel. But there was a residue. In other words, in my soul was here. There was brokenness. There was thoughts. There was, uh, there was these uh, strongholds. In other words, system of thoughts that I had. And see, I, it ain't got to be what you think. And maybe, uh, well, I've been in church. I come out of my mama speaking in tongues. I've done all this. I've done this. Look, I'm here to tell you there's a vulnerability uh, that the enemy will take you down if you start moving in the authenticity of God. Uh, but if you'll just stop and say, you know what? Total restoration is upon my life. I, the lamb slain before the... Uh, uh, before the earth was made, made or before the foundations of the earth. See, what you've done is you tapped into your originality. You already was. Amen. Now Jesus has restored you back. Amen. Make sense? Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right. So. Making sure I gave you all your points. I get teaching mode. Or I have to have the grace of God and just to focus. I just like to preach, sister. I like to preach Jesus. That means proclaim my King of Kings and my Lord of Lords. But it takes also teaching, right? Teaching will dismantle strongholds. I'm talking about those system of thoughts and how you think it is. And it shows you have access. It ain't because I'm preaching a thing. I'm here to tell you, Paul said that these, these Bereans were more noble than those in Thessalonia. What it meant for why he put that scripture is, is hey, I went preach the word. I went teach the word. But they were more noble. Why? Because they went to the word and got it for themselves. So don't take my word for it. Go get in the word. In other words, get in a relationship. He speaks more than audibly. Amen? Amen. Alright. Third one. The pressure to pull back from the apostolic mandate. The reason I, I bring it this way because God's reforming something, okay? I'm not making a major out of a minor. Of the fivefold of the apostle prophet. But I have been sent to this region for it to be reestablished. Okay, everybody's not a pastor. Here I'm getting ahead of myself. You wouldn't die that other wall. So Nehemiah 4 12. This is out of ESV. Everything else has been out of the NSAB. What at the time the Jews who lived near them came from all directions and said to us ten times, You must return to us. You must return to us. Amen. Apostolic moves have been hindered because the people have tried to bind the apostle up in a pastoral mantle. Just because you see uh, results of that, there's a flock that somebody's pastoring don't automatically make them a pastor. They could be a prophet. They could be an evangelist. An evangelist carries fire and they're about getting souls saved. A pastor wants to see them healed, set free in their fullness and really wants to labor with them. A pastor would stay up with you all night. Make sense? But an evangelist carries fire and preach Jesus and they move in signs and wonders and miracles. An apostle will cultivate you into the fullness of who you call. They govern in the spirit. They come and they push through old religious structures. Prophets are eyes and ears of God. They bring the now word, the now scene, the now song. That's the reason some prophets are um, on stage uh, and they're psalmist or they're lead worship. Because worship is not about a song that you like, but it's about a song being released out of the heart of the Father. <coughs> In other words, he has, a, he has a song for you right now. And it's being sung over you. Amen? My God. I mean, there, you can have all this. Now that, once he opened my eyes of that, that relationship, he broke down that religious structure in my mind. Look, you can have your religious ways. I'm going to keep plowing. I'm going to keep spending time with Jesus. And guess what? I'll just sit at the table with him and with all this stuff. Uh, you might be able to look. I've seen people, and I get so discouraged with this. And this is to this region. I get so discouraged. I had 50 people saved. I heard, I heard of great people. Now I'm all about people being saved. All of heaven rejoices, okay? 
But there was a there was a mighty man of God in, in a mighty movement. I can't remember his name, okay? They would ask him questions when they interviewed. They say, How many people got saved when you went in and done that crusade? He said, I don't know, I'll tell you when I go back in two years. See, a seed that springs forth will bring fruit. It will grow into something that will produce fruit. Amen? So with that, that example uh, and what you were producing two years ago. So if you gave your life 20 years ago um, to the Lord, but you haven't truly submitted unto Him, you might just have had an emotional experience. He might have been very real in that moment. He may have tugged on your heart, but you truly have not said, my life is not my own, but it's His. I'm not here to make you feel, you feel condemned. I just want you to make sure this is not an emotional thing. This is a submitted when the emotions pass, he's still there. When the emotions are very high, he's still there. And when you understand that, that I look, I don't move by emotion, I move by faith. In other words, I trust when everybody else has come against it. When it comes against your theology, when it comes against your doctrine, but this is how God moves. When did man ever come to tell God how he was going to move? <laughs> didn't go for a good for him, did it? Mm -mm. Amen. Sounds like Lucifer, and we'll be higher. So you've got to know the difference between the, the truth and the lie. Thank you, Lord. We're about to finish up. All right. All directions. Everyone around you is just wanting you to stop and settle down. Just stop. Just stop. We don't need to do that. We just need to gather people. We need to just hang out. Man, look, I can gather or whatever at the movies. I can gather uh, over with my family at the family reunion, right? And have dead things going on. I'm here to tell you, I'm gather with people that's got the utmost focus of King Jesus. I'm not trying to be super religious. I ain't trying to just quote you, King James. I want to be able to say, brother, I know you got something very real you're going through. Huh? And I want to be able to lock arms and say, look, huh? just because you open up about this, I'm not going to punish you for your, um, for your honesty. I want to take to help you understand I come from a similar thing or I see brother so and so or sister so and so they came from that same thing you need to lock arms with them in other words you need to trust somebody they're going to point you to Jesus that way we can rise up as a body and be an example to a sick and dying world to understand that everything ain't fruit loops and lucky charms huh? it's a very real thing huh? we're just passing through huh? and there's a true fruit of love huh? in other words that'll choose you a God they love that'll choose you right Miss your mess and give you the ability to get out of it. Philo's yeah, yeah. love is that emotional. Oh, I love you today. Let's get married. Let's get divorced tomorrow. The devil is a lie. That's why we got these fruity churches or whatever going around. I don't know why I got fruity, uh, but fruit little churches going around. We got people just bounce from door to door or whatever. The moment they're correct, they don't get anything. The devil is a lie. See, I, I love you enough to tell you, look, this is what's going on. And this is what we need to address. And even in the midst of your emotional outburst, the word is, I'm still here with you. Amen. We need to put some things in place, but I'm still here with you. Amen. Look, if I can carry that burden in the middle of the night, I should be able to carry it face to face. Somebody that's truly been sent by God or whatever for me to labor with. Does that make sense? Yeah. See, our problem is we don't labor in the middle of the night to break it, to push them through when we lock arms. See, you got to lock arms in the spirit first huh? and come agreement that we're seated in Christ Jesus. For we can labor through your emotion, for we can labor through your junk, for we can labor through everything that the devil has been persuaded you you come in agreement with. That way when we have locked arms in the midst of everything, and even those people coming from afar, even ten times saying, get away from there. Look, you ain't never faced that kind of this. You ain't never faced that kind of thing. You was. The difference, there's a fire in you now, and it's attractive because the, the devil knows if that mandate, if that fullness, if that fire goes, um, if it comes from an amber to a fire, what you'll do um, to that darkness. Amen. Amen. So, Ten, I mean, but you remember we're talking about all directions. Then it said everyone around you just wanted you to stop, settle down. But you had this fire. I mean, you ever heard that? Just like, but you had this fire. You got something, but man, you need to be doing this, you need to be doing that. 
everything else. And the thing is, <laughs> thank you, Jesus. I even see there's been some times that that's even been spoken to you or whatever. And you went and did. Amen. You went and helped. But the moment you said, hey, I need some help. You had something that said, hey, I got too much other stuff going on. I need to deal with this. Uh, when you get done with that, I'll be back. I hear the Lord saying, I'm bringing a remnant to you, which will stand with you in the midst of fire. To stand with you and your husband for the mandate. It's much more than a building. It's a time of plowing, but into the southeast that God is doing something new in y'all. This uh, the, the earth is waiting for y'all to even step into the new. As you step into this new season, it's gonna shift everything. Every you know, promises I see 13 years ago uh, and 12 years ago that God spoke into y'all's life through a vessel, spoke into y'all's life, even in private time, it was confirmation in public when they spoke. Uh, he says, I'm bringing it through. It's in the season says the Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Ten times the draw to withdraw can be relentless. Next one. Please can't. Please can't we have a nice church that isn't so radical? Look, I'm here to tell you most religious people would have walked in and heard one of my sisters traveling in the microphone or screaming, uh, you know, just crying out to Jesus. That's true worship. That's true prayer. That's true praise. That's true saying, you are king of my life. See, it's not about I, 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 Latanya two or three weeks ago or whatever um, as, as, she, as she was right here in worship. And there was this song that just come out of her. But she ain't going to leave worship nowhere. It was a heart of praise. I'm not speaking of the name. I'm here to tell you what I see behind. There was a breakthrough. She tapped into the song of the Lord. It was released and it comes in the water to others is what I'm getting at. It's not about how perfect your voice is. It's not about how performance you are. Or how good it looks. How your sermon set up all this. I'm here to tell you we have a God ha, that's looking for one that's submitted and says Lord and says whatever it takes, whatever it looks like. I just want to walk with you. You are who I, I, I've seen who I am in you and because of who I am in you I understand what I do to do in this world. See it's upside down to what the world thinks. It's upside down. The nice church is down the road. Not speaking negative against the nice church, okay? Don't hear what I'm praying for that church. What I'm saying is, if you're going to try to tell me what to do on this, or try to tell Prophet what to preach, or tell Ashley what to song, what song, and they've labored over that thing all week, and, and even after they've labored all week, you got to shift something that morning. I'm talking about a study. you got everything, and you see the depths of it or whatever. See, at Grandmama's church, I could say, I love this song, and, and they would sing it for me. Ah, but that song don't have no breakthrough in it. We need to get very real while where you're at with what God is releasing over your life. That way you come up out of your emotions, your theology, your mindset, where you can be broke free. Yes. Amen. In Jesus' name. Glorify you. Amen. Strategy is birthed from opposition. We're, 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 we're almost done. We got two and a half more hours. Hallelujah. That woke everybody up. <laughs> what? <laughs> We're here after long one closes. Long one house is open. Nehemiah 4, 13 through 14. So in the lower parts of the space behind the wall in an open place, I stationed the people by their clans, in other words, families, with their swords, their spears, and their bows. And I looked and, ar uh, and, I, looked, uh, I, looked and arose and said to the nobles and to the officials and to the rest of the people, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord is great and awesome. And fight for your brothers, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your homes. In other words, first, 
What did he do? He placed them, placed them in open places, places of vulnerability and attacks. And there's people, it's not about how well you can preach or teach or how well you can even um, systematically set up your prayer. If there is void of the Spirit, a void of the King of Kings, a void of the Lord of Lords, if it's void of that, guess what? You will have void results. It might be even accurate. But it has no push in the spirit. Everything the Holy Ghost there's movement. Amen. Everything. Even in the midst of your waiting. There's movement. Because waiting means preparation, right? It means I'm getting ready to face what's ahead. Thank you, Lord. So in other words, I'm big on this. Look, uh, we done a thing with a couple's retreat. And I just honor Shane and Haley today. They went, went forth and done an awesome couple's retreat. They heard really good testimonies. Ashley and I done a online thing with them because um, we couldn't be there with, with the newborn. And um, uh, with that, I uh, had something that the Lord gave me last minute and put it together. It was crazy. We was talking all week. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? And, and next thing you know, look, it didn't sound too pretty. It didn't sound like a good word. But guess what? No matter how it sounds, when the word is released, next thing you know, we know this. Look, we know this. And I'm not speaking of that. But people, when people, anytime people start confessing or people start trusting you, look, they're trusting the one in you. Amen. I believe there's a trust that's gained through relationship. But first thing, it comes with the Holy Spirit to touch somebody and they'll say, hey, I mean, I, I can't believe it. Afterwards, you know, I can't believe I said all that. I just vomit all over them. <laughs> Amen. You ever tell you a good example of this? My 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 wife now predestined. It was predestined from the foundation of her. I sat down the first day with her and I told her every mess I was in. I told her all the brokenness because I just wanted to realize, like, you know what? If she can receive the old me, she'll be able to receive the new me. So that makes sense. When you want to know if somebody's really for you, if they're family or whatever else, is they'll receive you right in your mess, but they won't leave you in your mess. They'll say, hey, I, I understand this is very real, but I'm locked arms. When you get up, you have the power that raised Jesus from the dead. Let's proclaim this word until it gets a great in your heart, until wholeness is took place. In other words, that means transparency. I, I was broke down as a little boy, but the little boy ain't broke no more. So that means I might have to be vulnerable. Uh, open wound is still a stab as did Christ Jesus. In other words, transparency. The one that has testimony that I was broken, but now I'm free. I was addicted, but now I'm free. I was broken half, no good as the world said, even as my thumb printed by, uh, in the world says, but now because of Christ Jesus. Huh? I'm healed and made whole. Yes, Lord. You just got to break agreement with that thing. You need somebody that will labor with you that's already broke agreement. Yes. Amen? Amen. All right. Clans, family and alignment. That's what clans mean, family and alignment. So we're not just talking about blood. In other words, household bloodline. We're talking about spiritual family, the body of Christ. Alignment means this equipping. So if you look at alignment and you look at, I think it's in Ephesians uh, chapter 4, and you look at that word, when you break it down, it comes uh, the best way they could have explained it then. It was actually like a bone that was broken and put back into place. It's amazing. See, I was a broken man, and Jesus Christ put me back in place. But when he put me back in place... He had somebody for me to be accountable to. He had somebody that would labor with me. He had somebody that didn't bring uh, uh, slavery upon me, but brought freedom upon me. But can I tell you, it cuts sometimes, sister. But my peace is still there. Just put out. Yes, sir. Well, let's change your language a little bit. What Rabbi said to you. I hear what you're saying. Let's change your language a little bit. Where people can understand you. It cut me because what I was doing, my intentions and my motives were right, but what was coming out of my mouth but didn't have complete understanding. So he said, let's change this just a little bit. Make sense? You need counsel. You need people to be accountable to. And the cool thing is what I've learned. i got a spiritual father that's amazing. It don't matter if I'm talking to him when, I'm, when we're talking and we're speaking, he actually listens to me. Even if it's like for real life things or whatever, he asks me a question. He listens to me. He just don't say, oh, you've been, you've been doing this long enough or whatever else. Right? 
A true relationship will always honor both ways. Just like it's not a one-way conversation. It's a dialogue. It's a respect and honor back and forth. Because you're still looking to the head. Amen? Alright. Y'all ready? So I'm going to give you this. The last of it, I promise. Swords. Remember I talked about it. Put swords in their hand. That's a short range, uh, range weapon. Amen? What does it talk about the word? Double it's a sword. sword, and it will what? It'll split a bow and marrow. Yeah. Right? It, it, it separates spirit and soul. In other words, there'll, there'll be times or whatever that, that God puts a He says, I'll put a sword in your hand, and you're to weld it, right? You're to speak it. You're combating the enemy. But the cool thing is, this is what the Lord is showing me. It's more of close range. More people that has access closer up to me. Does that make sense? Thank you, Jesus. All right, the next one. Spears is more of a mid-range weapon. Amen? For Judah. Okay? So with this, what I'm taught, what I mean by this is, is uh, I, I think the best example is this. How many knows about Saul? And he, he was there and he had authority in the natural realm for Stephen to be all the way killed to death. Saw me, right? Says he was present. But Stephen goes into intercession in worship. And he says, Lord, they just receive my spirit. That's my utmost thing. Uh, and he says he sees the Father. I mean, Jesus at the right hand of the Father. And he goes into prayer. When he goes into prayer, remember, it doesn't say that Paul was, he said Paul was present. He's throwing a spear in intercession. Don't hold them. They're ignorant of what they do. Remember it says, Paul says, I was ignorant of what I was doing to the church. Right? He, Stephen's in intercession and he's got that mid-range um, spear. How do I know this? Because he goes on at the conversion of Paul and he says this. Jesus says, why do you kick against the bricks? Why do you kick against the ghosts? It's called what translation you look at it. You know what that means? If you look at it in the natural realm, that's how they moved oxen. It was a spear that would move oxen around. I believe the prayers, I honestly, I believe the prayers of Stephen was spear stoning and come across her bringing a conviction of Saul at that moment. And later on, uh, gee, look, this is even evidence of the word. Jesus, uh, he says, look, these people do these things, right? Jesus took it very personal. Why do you persecute me? It was Stephen that died, but Stephen was in holiness, right? I mean, like, in glory. Um, but all of a sudden, the, he, what, Jesus takes it very personal. So in other words, he gets this revelation when you're getting attacked. No matter who you are, Jesus takes it personal. He'll deal with it when he needs to deal with it. Amen. But don't get ahead of him and try to defend yourself or fight something that you, you, you don't have that responsibility to even fight. Amen. You're being developed as an example to show the likeness of who you abide in. Bows, the last one, long range weapon. We know this is spiritual warfare. This is the enemy. In other words, this sometimes we're fighting the enemy with a sword. But really, spiritual warfare is it talks about the watchmen on the wall. They would see these things, they'd be able to see from afar. Make sense? Be able to see these things from afar and make a stop it before you get to here to the house of God or here to your household. I want you not focus, I want you to focus to build with us here and to take over this region, but I want your household to be a household of glory first. Does that make sense? I want you to be able to come in and as you made a throne room upon your heart into Christ Jesus, that when you step into your house, the glory of God rests there. Amen. Amen. So spiritual warfare, when it talks about um, long-range weapons, is um, that of spiritual warfare is bow and arrow. So with that, the apostolic only produce strategy combat warfare on every level. Amen? You see these all three realms. We see this in the natural realm. We see this in the soulless realm. That's where religion comes from, the soulless realm, y'all. It's what I think. It's how I feel. This is this. This is my... I really, they have your will, Lord, but really they're preaching for their will. Amen? It's more about their ministry than it is about truly reconciliation. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so my question this morning, do you have a mind to work? And that's it, I promise. That's it. Do you have a mind to work? 
in the midnight hour when everything comes, you've, I don't know who this is for or whatever in the room, when you've actually submitted and said, hey, I'm going to preach here because they called me in. Are you going to prepare and have a mind to work? Because you know what? The moment that you truly have a fire and the enemy finds out that you might be going somewhere and the what you carry because there's a measure on your life that you're going to touch and agree with a sister or a brother or whatever else, guess what? All hell is coming against you because guess what? He wants to keep division in the church. He don't want unity in the church. See, the moment we come into the agreement and touch and agree and we go forth as a body, mm -hmm. that's really so much division because we come, we, we're ignorant of what the enemy's doing even in amongst us. That's the word of God right there, y'all. I'm sure we have division sometimes. Do you have a mind to work even when your boss says, hey, I know this is going to mess your plans up, but I need you to do this. Well, oh, this don't sound too, too much like, well, yeah, that's just the Bible. It's just the part you haven't tapped into yet. When I read that, that my submission into a, a physical authority, in other words, somebody, they might not even know Christ, but by me submitting unto them and doing what they said, that can shift their life. In other words, I'm not trying to control everything they labor for. I've been sent as an example of the kingdom where kingdom principles could even transform that business. My God, I hear the Lord saying, that's the mandate and why He sent you in. If you understand, it's about those sheep and those girls and uh, this there. But I hear the Lord saying, Prophet Yvonne, is I've established you there to bring multiplication and to bring it as a kingdom business. Transformation is ahead. I, I, I just see him peeling away, peeling away. Oh Lord, not you, but a broken young lady. Uh, 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 people there, uh, of people there authority that hear the Lord say transformation is their portion. That's from an example of Jesus. Does that make sense? Your household. Your household. What's going on in your household? What are you allowing in your house? We don't want to hear this, do we? We don't want to talk about this. What's going on with it? What do you tolerate? Remember, whatever you tolerate, you'll continue to have to tolerate. I'm not trying to divide the house. What I'm trying to do is show you that you will submit in the King Jesus. And as you submit to King Jesus, guess what? Your example will shift your household. You'll quit coming in. Oh, he's always going to be an addict. <laughs> Hogwash. That once an addict, always an addict. That's of the world. Yeah, if you stay in the world, you will always be an addict. But the moment, because that veil was ripped. And that ultimate sacrifice, that blood was upon the mercy seat. There ain't no addicts in heaven. Amen. 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 There's freedom in heaven. Yeah. You know what addiction means? A to toxic compulsive behavior. That's my definition. A toxic compulsive behavior. That's addiction. There ain't none in heaven. Amen. 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 So with that. There's, there's, there's three things of words of knowledge um, that I, I know that God's going to pray for uh, us to pray for in the physical uh, realm. High blood pressure. Um, I felt like it was a right knee. And uh, also, um, something to do with calcium. I don't know what that is. Um, I know those three, if you can um, begin to take and uh, cut on. Um, that also anxiety. He's going to deal with that realm of anxiety that I understand you may not feel so anxious right now. And you may, I don't know. You get in a prophetic atmosphere and, he and heaven comes down. You know what I'm saying? Things will live. So it's illegal in the presence of God. But the moment you step out of the moment, when you come, there may have been a level of anxiety you was carrying. That makes sense? Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. And God wants to deal with that. Like permanently. So, with that, anybody at all, anybody that would want to come up, that wants prayer, I'd like for the team to come up. Um,